So Mike, good to be with you bro. Yeah. We're having a uh, research day to day. We are. Bad weather out there so we're, we're here. So um, what's been on your mind about Hyde Park bro? Well I've been watching Hyde Park recently on YouTube and I've noticed that more people are starting to come down and argue basically about their religious beliefs. Now it's not just Christians and Muslims there, now we're getting different sects of Islam down there. So it's a mixed bunch of people. Um, I find me Hyde Park, it's a good place to argue your point, but I do believe there's a lot of people down there that don't want to learn or listen to the other side. So basically me and Jay go down to Hyde Park and we bring scholarly stuff down. We bring research, history, that kind of stuff, archaeology. And these are the basic things that you learn at school, history. That looking at the past, if you look at the past, it tells you a lot about the future and it tells you a lot about what's gone on before. And a lot of people down there, a lot of Muslims, a lot of atheists, when you bring these facts to them, they just don't want to know, they dismiss them and they argue against facts, which I find really unusual. But I think it, we are in the age of ignorance at the moment, and in order to be enlightened, you need to study, you need to look at facts and deal with facts rather than ignoring them and attacking other people's faith, let's look at what we're actually saying. If you can review it, then bring it on. If you can't, then don't don't say it's wrong. That's, all That's what I've noticed at Hyde Park. Um, I think Hyde Park needs more people like myself, Jay, more scholarly people to go down there and to really, really um, take that park over and expose some of the people down there that, on what they're actually trying to do. Um, I'm more for the truth, I'm, I'm for the truth of the Bible, the truth of God's word and to lift up the gospel because the gospel is the truth and um, you can attack it all day long, it's been attacked for thousands of years but it still stands true to this day. So yeah, I think Hyde Park needs a bit of a revival to be fair. So when we first went down Mike, um, we, we had debates, I had debate with Shamsi, we'll get into that later on. Yeah. Uh, we had these debates and they wanted to debate us and you've mentioned they don't want to debate us yeah um, I've, I've been uh, uh, quite um, shocked by that because they claim that they want to know the truth mm. but now they won't debate us and they won't debate us because every time we're debating them you, we're bringing material down yeah. that exposes them so could you just unpack that a little bit more I know you've mentioned it but um, w am I right in saying that we're finding a dishonesty amongst the Muslim apologists down there that we in are. this in this area we are yeah it's very very dishonest the thing is when you when when we bring think when we're bringing facts down we're bringing evidences down the worst thing you can do intellectually in that kind of situation is to attack the other person so this is what I'm seeing at Hyde Park. Christians like me and Jay and others, we're bringing actual facts from history. We're bringing down things that can't be refuted, yet you attack us as a person and call us liars. If we're lying, I'd love you to explain what we're lying on. And if you, could, if you can't back up your position like we can, then that shows a lot. It shows that you haven't got a position, basically, yeah. to defend. Yeah, I found, I found that... Um, there's a there's a two pronged attack on the Christian apologists down at Hyde Park. Mm. One is down there they'll attack the personalities like you're saying, like uh, they'll attack Lizzie and Hatoum. Yeah. But also online, you, we we find I find uh, on blogging theology, uh, and the apologists there that there's a heck of a lot of material that that's on there where they're just attacking the people rather than actual the arguments. Yeah. And these are uh, some of their premier apologists online. So they're involved in a massive had honum had honum and attack on people's character rather than actually dealing with the scholarship. And uh, I'm going to put this to you and tell me what you think. I'm going to make a proposition and tell and could you unpack it and the proposition is this when we see people like Mohammed Hijab, Paul Williams, Hashem, Hamza, and many of these apologists actually talking to Christians, young Christians, and atheists and agnostics, 
my proposition is this that they just want to get good photo shots of talking to people who are easy targets yeah and once they got those photo shots they're happy but they don't want to debate really anybody who's going to come down with research unless they're like trolls unless it brings a bit more fame to them would you unpack that yeah, um, basically, um, I agree with what you're saying. What I've noticed is that when we do go to Hyde Park with scholarly stuff, they're running away. They don't want to debate us. And I think if you are, if you've got something about you, if you are an apologist for Islam, then you have to take on the scholarly arguments that are being brought down. If you can't, mocking, jeering, and laughing and making loads of noise doesn't is a diversional tactic not to deal with the issues at hand. That's brilliant. That. You know, I could do that. I could laugh at the Quran, mock it and jeer at all the things that are in it, but I'd rather not do that. I'd rather bring a scholarly argument. And if you can't debate scholarly, then you shouldn't be at Hyde Park. You need to go away and really think about why you're there and what's the reasons for you being there. Mm. You know, I go down there to bring the truth. And if you can't handle the, the facts that we're bringing, then and then you attack me for doing so, then that shows how dishonest and disingenuous you really are. You need to step up and start to deal with facts because you can't bury your head in the sand. It's, it's not the way that you, that, that you deal with life. It's not the way you, you deal with your problems. Just bury your head in the sand. You face it head on. You make a good point because over the years I've dealt with militant atheists and it's very rare, very difficult to get a, a formal academic debate because once you're on at equal terms, they'll get exposed. And it's the same with these Muslim apologists. I, I've just been recently asked to debate uh, a Muslim apologist who works alongside uh, Yahya Snow, who's a Muslim apologist online. And they, they put it out, they want to debate someone on, is the New Testament reliable? So I said, I'll debate. And I, I, I've got it on my phone, I can prove it. I said, but if I debate you, wouldn't it be good uh, after to also debate the Quran, hmm. the reliability of the Quran? Uh, if and this, he said, yeah, yeah. I said, no, the apologist doesn't want to debate. It's not. He can't debate on that at the moment. I said, well, I sent a message back saying, well, you got to live. That's not intellectually honest. Yeah. And you've got to live with that. I said, I'll, deb I'll debate, but you're not intellectually honest and I'm finding and I find that not just with the atheists but online but I find with a Muslim apologist in Hyde Park and I find online the lack of open honest transparency in debate like the debate that I had with this um, that Muslim apologist online uh, Mohammed Lamzi is it? I can't, can't remember but the, it's about a two hour one I think I know which one you mean yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it was stated the the time, it was stated the order of the debate, but then they threw in a surprise at the end of the debate, they said, well, we'll have open questions. When there were open questions, it, there were one Christian and then there were like three Muslims who asked questions. The three Muslims that asked questions, they were all either apologists or trainee apologists. So really I was debating not one, but four Muslim apologists. And again, that's not being fair. And and if Islam is true, you should be able to organise fair, open debates and you should be willing to allow the Quran and critical scholarship done on Islamic sources. And we're not finding that, are we? No, not at all. Now, if we do a critical analysis of the Quran, then you should be open to that because it's the word of God. God's word can be tested, it can be scrutinised, and it'll stand up in the light of criticism, if that's the case. But if you if the Quran is the word of God, don't be scared of people criticising it or scrutinising it, because the Bible's been scrutinised and criticised for years, and it still stands the test of time. Now, the thing is, putting Islam under the microscope is not a bad thing if you've got the truth. If you haven't got the truth, then there's going to be a big uproar about it. Now, there's one, um, I don't really want to get into personal things, but I want to say this. If the Quran and Islam is true and it's from a God, 
who is a righteous God, then if a person leaves the faith of Islam, then there shouldn't be any fear of death. And that only applies in, I would say that applies more in Islamic countries than it does in westernised countries. Um, so if, if it is true, then let me, put you, let me put it to you this way, Muslims, and think about what I'm saying. God give every human being free will. If a human being decides he doesn't want to follow a certain faith, then God would not say, you must die. That to me is not from God. That violates man's free will, which God has given freely to all. If I left Christianity, I wouldn't be threatened with death, or the church wouldn't be knocking at my door, or there'd be a fat letter issued against me. So think about. I just want you to think about that. Mm. Um, just be honest with your scripture. If it's from, if if it's so pure and so perfect, then let's talk about it. Let's scrutinise it. Let's put it under the microscope. Um, we're open and honest about what we believe and what we've got. We're just asking you to do the same. And and and. Before God, are we lying? Are, are we lying? Are we are we really trying to score points here, or are we are we be are we being honest and true? If there are young Muslim people here listening right now, are we telling the truth? Are we telling the truth that the Muslim apologists are not being honest with us? That they're not willing to engage? That a lot of all the debates that Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, Paul Williams, and many of these apologists, Hamza. 90, at least 95, I'd say at least 90% of it is stage managed to make them look good, that they'll debate easy targets but they won't debate people who, who can expose them. Yeah. And if they do, very often, if they like, like you were telling me the, that um, Lizzie debated Paul Williams, yeah. if they do debate some of our better debaters, they, they run away. Yeah. Like they, they they just can't hack it and they disappear. Um, what is this great fear that Muslims have about talking about the Quran candidly and honestly? You you put us under pressure and say, well, you must the Bible. You put the Bible under a certain criterion that it must meet this perfect criterion. But when we reverse it and put that criterion on the Quran, you say, oh no. The mentality I've found with in Islam is that. If you're a Muslim, if you've been a Muslim, say a month, according to your mindset, that Muslim will know more about Islam than somebody, somebody that studied it for twenty years, and I'm, I find that unacceptable, totally unacceptable, because the Quran is a book. The Quran is a book that's to be recited, and in, in my understanding, it's not to be understood. If you just recite something and think you're going to get blessings from it then you need to also look at what it's actually saying and what it's claiming. Mm, mm. And if you can't deal with someone criticising it or scrutinising it, and you can't answer, that shows that the foundation it's built on is sand and it's just going to crumble at, at, at honest inquiry. But when you do an honest inquiry of the Bible, it stands. Mm, mm. It stands the test of time and it stands the test of scrutiny. So in, in short... What we're saying is there's a lot of, you, you, as young Muslims, especially if you're a young person, a lot of what you're seeing on the internet with the debates at Hyde Park are stage managed. Yeah. Where they're picking on easy targets, agnostic atheists, and uh, people who, who are not going to give them really difficult questions. But when we come down and when people come down with proper research, then they they're not they're not willing to deal with it so and that is not just in the area of Hyde Park but I'm finding professionally with Yaya Snow and the, the, the a, a professional Muslim apologetics team they're not really willing to be open to be scrutinized themselves on their own sources and there's a there's a total lack of integrity there yeah I would say if you are a young Muslim or you're somebody who's looking at, at God and the belief in God and what the truth is I would say choose wisely and use your intelligence. Um, I would recommend this book. It's called Choosing Your Faith by Mark Mittenberg, and it gives you it gives you a scrutiny of looking at options of of why you should choose your religion carefully and what you believe in carefully. Because if you look at the world today, there's thousands of religions out there, but there's one thing that's lacking. 
is that religion does not get you to God. Only a relationship with the, with God through Christ is the only way that you're going to get to know who God truly is. Now the Bible says that we must worship God in truth and in spirit. If we're not worshipping God in truth and in spirit, then we're worshipping an idol and something that's not of God. So I would look very carefully at what you believe in and what people are telling you. Test everything. The Bible says test all spirits. Test everything. Scrutinise it. Don't just believe it, but put it to the test and you'll find that the Bible comes out on top. Amen. Amen. So that's from us, from Royal Blood Ministries on this topic about the Muslim apologist and their, their lack of honesty in debating. Now we're going to look in the next video. Uh, check out our website, Twitter and YouTube channel. They're going to be uh, uploading material. And my own, jasonbirdspreacher.com uh, and YouTube channel and Facebook, etc. So, and Twitter. So look out for these things. And uh, we're going to be doing another video, and we're going to be looking at some of the arguments of Muslim apologists. Can I just read this quick? Yeah, it's okay. yeah, yeah. Um, there's a passage in the Bible that says that that if we or an angel preach any other gospel, let them be let them be accursed. Paul's actually says Paul saying that we need to carefully weigh what others say about what you believe to be true about the scriptures. Um, even though Paul said he was an apostle, he says that we should not automatically trust someone just because he or she claims to be an apostle. Okay, instead what we need to do, we need to compare their message to the message that has already been received and put it under scrutiny. Now then Muhammad says he's an apostle, in the Quran it says Muhammad is an apostle of God, or he's a, he's a, he's a, a prophet, is he really? Put it to the test and and really, really scrutinise and look at history and you'll find a different Muhammad to what Islam is telling you. Amen. Thank you, Mike. God bless you, folks. And thank you for joining us today.